Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we will be solving a kind of classical DP problem, but uh, it's a little easy and uh, you might now actually understand why it uh, is like an easy DP problem and what exactly is DP and the you know property of DP, which is the overlapping uh, substructure, like an answer for a particular value n depends on other values. So you know that uh, tree structure, right? So like that, you will get to know why. And there are other problems in this list. This list has good number of DP problems, but there are many tough ones. And actually problem in finding out whether it belongs to dynamic programming approach or not is that the problem statements are written in such a way that we might not even get to know it is going to be DP. So let us read the problem of today. Consider a game where a player can score three or five or 10 points in one move. Given the total score N, find number of distinct combinations, distinct combinations to reach the given score. Okay, so let us take an example and see what they're actually trying to tell us. And this question, some people find it a little controversial, but still, I'll tell you what it is. So if the score is eight, we have to reach eight. What can we do? We can do three things. Either we can choose three or five or 10 somehow. So basically what the question is, somehow we should choose uh, three. So X times we should choose three, Y times we should choose five, 10 times if we choose Z, it should be equal to eight. Now let us do some trial and error method. If I substitute X, Y, Z as uh, one, one, zero, then it will be three into one plus five into one plus zero equal to eight, which is true. So you can see that if I do the score, if I, in the first move, I do three and then I do five in the second move, then I will get a score of eight. So this is one way, but in this question, it says, if you do five and three, then it is same as this. I don't know how. So these uh, two are considered to be same. So you might be thinking the answer for this, if n is equal to eight, it should be two. No, it is not two, it is only one. Because three, five and five, three are considered to be same in this problem. And in the end, I'll also tell you what if it was not the same? What would you do if it was not the same? What would you do if you had to count this case also? See over here in the last, if you come down, if you scroll down, it will say, for example, number one, if n is equal to eight, 3 comma 5 and 5 comma 3 are considered to be two possible permutation, but they represent same combination. So our output is one. So this was like a mathematical approach. Actually, uh, most of the dynamic programming problems you can solve easily if you're good at permutation combination. So this is also like a permutation combination, like how many times should I choose three, which order I should choose three. So like that, which uh, five, 10 also, like which move should I do? It's like a permutation combination. So if you know PNC properly, actually dynamic programming, most of the problems you can solve very easily. And for my bad luck, I'm not that good at this. PNC, I was just okay, okay-ish. So if you're really, if you have done very well in engineering or 11th and 12th PNC, then majority of you will find dynamic programming actually quite easy. Although some problem statements are there, which are going to be tough to understand, but PNC can solve most of the problems. Okay, so now let us see actually what will we be using. See, it's a simple DP problem, nothing uh, too much, not a hi-fi level, uh, but let me show you. So I'll just minimize myself. Okay, so let us take another example. Suppose N was equal to 13. What will we do? See, basically to find out what the score for 13 can be, I should know what the score for 12 is because it is dependent on that. 11 also, 10 also, until zero, I need to know all these scores because see, le let us go back to the previous example. Okay, now 
if I don't know what the score for three can be, how can I find for eight? Because three plus five only is equal to eight, right? So like that, what the score for three, five can be, will determine for eight also. It will help us determine total number. See, we have to find total number of ways. So you can think of it like this Fibonacci, not exactly Fibonacci, but even in Fibonacci sequence, the term depends on the previous two terms value. I think you will know what is Fibonacci, right? So it depends on previous two term over here. It depends on all the values from zero to N. So let us write all the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll show you why it depends also. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What is the base case going to be here? There should be a base case. See, DP problems are actually recursive, recursive solutions when you optimize it, like you do the top down, then only a memo, a memoization, then only you will get like the DP solution, like the table form. But in recursion, there will always be base case. Over here, what is base case? See, we are starting, we are assuming we are starting from score zero. So if n is equal to zero, our answer is not zero. Our answer is one. Because again, in permutation combination, there is something called as not doing an event, not picking an item is also considered one way. Same way, not doing anything is also one way. So if n is equal to zero, our answer is going to be one. So we will use that over here. So these are all the numbers. And let us say these are the scores, like the total ways to get it. Actually, I'll write to T only total ways to get that score. So for, I mean, the initial values will be what one over here and everything zero. Let us fill everything with zero initially. We don't know what is the answer going to be, but we know for zero for sure. So base case n equal to zero answer is equal to one done. Okay. Now come to one. Can you get one? Can you ever get a score of one? See, moves are only like this, either five, three or 10. So how can you get one? Leave it. Can you get two? Leave it. Can you get three? Yes. How to know you got three? How to know you can get three? Well, let us now just assume that we can get three. What are the ways we can tell orally? How can you get three? There is only one way. Either you just move three. Okay. So we'll fill one for now and all other values zero only. Okay. For now, let us do this. For four, what does four depend on? Four depends on what? See, you can do three, five or 10. These are the only possible moves. Now five and 10 are greater than four. Only three is less than it. So if I want to know the score for four, score for four will also, will, will depend on score for four minus three also, whatever there is score for one, because if I could score one, if at all there was a possibility I can score one, then I could add three to get four, right? So wherever you can add three to get some value, then that possibility also you should take. So in this case, anyway, to get one, there is no way. So it is zero only. Okay. So oh, in this case, this will remain zero, but it will help us in the future. So I'll remove all this one second. I need space. So let us come back where we were like this. So four is zero. Okay. Let us do for five now. For five, what will it depend on? With the same logic for five, what will it depend on? So score of five depends on what? Score of five, it will depend on score of five minus three, score of five minus three, two. So it is zero only. So we don't need this. What about five minus five? What is score of zero? One. Score of zero is one. So it will be one here. So for five, we checked what three and five. Why not 10? 10 is greater. You, if you do a move which results in a score 10, obviously you can't score five. So what are we understanding over here? For whatever value, if it is greater than or equal to three, we check for what are the total number of ways to achieve score of i minus three. If it is greater than or equal to five, 
if you have a current i value so all these represent i only right if i is greater than or equal to 5 we check for score greater than i mean score of i minus 5 why again i am telling you see if i plus 3 results in the or not i suppose some j j plus 3 results in our current iteration number i then we should take it into account how many ways are there to get this because when we are finding total number of ways we have to add it now i will tell you for 10 what will happen see i will write it now directly i will not keep writing see for 5 it is 1 for 6 what can we do check for 3 score of 6 minus 3 is 1 so 1 so this will become 1 what about 6 minus 5 it is 0 because score of 1 is 0 right score of 1 is 0 over here so 1 7 7 minus 3 is 4 0 7 minus 5 is 2 0 score total number of ways to get those is 0 so 0 8 also 8 will be 1 we saw already 8 is 1 what about 9 9 minus 3 is 6 see score of 6 is 1 9 minus 5 is 4 it is 0 so total number will be what 0 plus 1 plus this value 0 so 1 10 see for 10 we can check A score of 10 minus 10 also see we can check score of 10 minus 10 which is 1 because score of 0 is 1 okay so 1 plus what is what about score of 10 minus 5 see it is 1 so plus 1 10 minus 3 7 it is 0 so here it is 2 that is why i told it is dependent on the previous values so we can see it is a tp problem it is easy to understand right we are getting that repeating uh, dependency we are getting for 11 so you fill for 11 and 12 and tell me in the comments what will be for 11 and 12 and 13 for 13 we will check 13 minus 3 10 2 13 minus 5 8 and uh, what about this one uh 13 minus uh, 13 minus 10 is 3 sorry and 13 minus 3 that is 2 so over here actually it should be 4 but our answer in this problem it was 2 so that is what is the doubt so actually it should be 4 but it is giving 2 so how do we avoid this so as i told you 3 comma 5 and 5 comma 3 they are the same how to avoid this so to avoid this we have to write the code in a specific way so first we will consider all the possible values for the move with 3 if we choose the move which will result in a score of like 3 or whatever we will choose that and we will do whatever uh, i discussed like score of i minus 3 we will add it to score of i then we will do it with 5 then we will do it with 10 if you do it like this then the answer for 13 will come out to be 2 but what if you want the answer for this to come out to be 4 if you want the answer for 13 to come out to be 4 then what extra you need to add in this code so the extra thing that you have to add in this code is you have to add a score of i minus 3 over here and over here you have to add score of i minus 5 plus score of i minus 3 as i had explained see for 13 what did i do for 13 i i was telling you right i can take either 3 5 or 10 so 13 minus 3 10 what is score of 10 2 okay 2 what is 13 minus 5 8 total ways to get 8 is what total ways to get 8 is 1 total ways to get 3 is also 1 so it should be 4 but ideally it is not ideally it is only 2 so this is a debate that people have and uh, but if you want me to submit this it will get submitted actually now it will give a wrong answer because i have changed the part of the code See over here, it is giving wrong answer because I have changed the part. I have to remove this to get it correct. <clears throat> so if I remove that and submit, 
now it is correct so i explain to you what can be done if you are asked to find all combinations over here they are considering 3 5 5 3 if it just like a permutation then they are considering the same and it was kind of weird but yeah it is how you, this is how you solve so it's actually a basic problem and not that hard to understand that's all for this video if you liked it hit the like button and share it with all your friends it might help them subscribe to the channel it will really really motivate me and take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye